Okay, so um, up on the roof here in beautiful Rincon, Puerto Rico, I think it's the 6th, I think the 6th of March, uh, 2018. Anyway, as you can see behind me, there's a whole bunch of surf going on. Anyway, people have been asking what I've been doing down here, so I figured I'd take a quick little video and show you guys what I've been doing. So, uh, come on aboard. First, I put in a couple of... Uh, Skylights, sun tunnels. That's one uh, 14 inch one for the, the head, upstairs head. This is a 21 inch one or 22 inch one for the kitchen. And then look at this. This is my solar array, which consists of nine uh, poly panels, 320 watts a piece. They're uh, in series parallel, strings of three. Uh, so they're pumping about 100 volts on each of the three uh, strings. And uh, from here they go down to a combiner box. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so here's our old meter. We are uh, off the grid, as you can see here. Breakers are down. The thing is not spinning, hasn't been spinning for a while. So the power comes down and it comes up here to my combiner box. I've got uh, four slots. I can put six in, but I got four breakers just in case I want to add another string. But uh, basically, we're running three panels on each one of these breakers. Combines into here. You'll see this. This is just temporary because I'll explain to you. I got to move everything around. But from the combiner box, it goes into my outback power center. You can see that in a second. And this is my really cheap, embarrassing uh, battery bank. You know, batteries are uh, always a fun subject. You can also see here, this is a, uh, these are eight gauge wires that I just have for testing this out. You can see my four aught cables that I made up and they're all going down where I'm gonna be moving the power center down below into the basement, leaving these out here so that they'll ventilate properly. But I just have that ready to go so when I'm ready I can do that. But uh, anyway, the batteries, why did I go with such a cheap, awful, old lead-acid battery bank? And uh, it's kind of simple. Um, this is our vacation home. We only come down here for like two weeks at a time. Right now, I have very little loads, so uh, I don't require a lot of power. Um, if I bring these down to 50% or better, I should be able to get about 800 cycles out of them. Uh, right now... I am bringing them down to about 60% and uh, that's mainly because of a really inefficient refrigerator that I have and uh, I've ordered a new one and it will be in in April so when I get that instead of using 4.8 kilowatts of power to run my refrigerator my new refrigerator should use only 800 watts a day so that old beast right there uses the entire battery bank to keep it running all night long which is a uh, terrible so anyway this is the outback power center it's a uh, grid interactive it's a uh, what they call a uh, 30 48 so it's 3 kW continuous 48 volts it's a single phase pure uh, sine wave inverter and it operates in eight different modes so you can do everything from having it be a UPC backup to a grid tie to what they call mini grid so that uh, you use everything use your batteries but if your batteries go lower you don't have enough sun then it grows out to the grid and grabs a little bit like that you can do a whole bunch of things I have it set up right now for totally off grid so basically let me walk you through this I have uh, the power coming off the combiner box from the solar panels right here also the power coming off the, uh, the battery banks uh, comes out here and then up here behind the wall this is the AC side and this goes up to the breaker box and uh, it feeds the house. Now the whole thing that you have to know about is that this is a 110 system so it's single phase so if you, the house was originally wired for 240 I had to dead leg a phase out and jump everything over and make everything onto 110. The only thing that we were using the 244 in this was a dryer that we haven't used in 20 years in the house so I got rid of that. Um, we had some electric hot water heaters and I changed those over to propane just so I wouldn't have to, uh, you know, I have a propane instant fired gas hot water heater so that we won't have to 
uh, invest in a bigger battery bank. And incidentally, by, by the battery bank, um, I figure the, those little cheap-ass, awful batteries I have out there, they'll probably last me two or three years. And in two or three years, the lithium-ion or the iron Edison batteries, the nickel-iron batteries that I'd like, either one of those technologies continue to get cheaper and cheaper and better and better by every day. So the little bit that I spent on the battery bank out there is just kind of a stopgap measure to kind of hold me and allow me to get off the grid, power everything up at a very reasonable price until I'm ready to make a substantial investment in a larger battery bank that will do all kinds of stuff. So anyway, power comes in here. This is the DC side, but you can't really see it. And this whole thing is going to move. When I put this up here, I was all happy because I like the lights and seeing everything that's going on and all that sort of stuff. My wife heard the fan and she said, no, it's got to go. So I was supposed to move this down in the basement this time, but I got caught up in other projects that I'll show you. So anyway, what you're not really seeing over here is we have a bunch of breakers. Uh, the PV array breaks out. There's a uh, ground fault array. There's a, oh, oh, all kinds of other ones. And then a great big um, battery disconnect there. And then up here, there's all the AC breakers for everything. That's all tucked in behind here. That'll be easier access. I, although I figured when I put this up here, I wouldn't have to access them at all. I've been kind of right about that, but it's hard to show people. So anyway, this is the inverter. Taking the 48 volts DC and making it into 120 volts AC. Uh, this is the AC side. This right here is a, I think they call it a DC, a FlexNet. FlexNet DC is what Outback calls it. And it's a, basically a battery monitor. Um, this right here is Outback's infamous 80 amp controller, charge controller used all over the world everybody loves them they're awesome and then this thing is a this is their network hub and basically this is just a communication thing so this thing is constantly talking to the battery monitor to the inverter to the charge controller if you had a, a grid it would be talking to the grid as well or monitoring it sending all that information here to our mate 3 controller and this thing will basically be able to control everything from one central location and it also has the ability to uh, put all this stuff using Optics RE software so that when I'm back stateside, I can look at my phone and be able to see all this. Now, the one thing, keep bear in mind that this whole system here is going to be moved into the basement so nobody will hear it and see it and all that sort of stuff. It's also a little noisy. Right now, the fan has a bunch of different speeds, and right now the fan is, is running really slowly because there aren't a lot of loads on. This right here is showing that our batteries are at like 87%. We can make this even brighter there. 87% sun shining. We're only, oh, I mean, we got clouds. It just was raining a little while ago. But anyway, putting out 6.6 or 600 watts right now going into the batteries. Um, we're not buying or selling any power. And uh, the house is using about 200 watts. So that's what that, that's going on. You can do a whole bunch of stuff with this. You can come down here and see, for example, we're making 690 watts right now we've made 4.2 since this morning and it is just a little after 12 right now like i say we've been having rain all morning uh basically we have i don't know if you can see that or not but it says 150 15 volts and that's dc coming in at six amps the charge controller brings it down to 54 volts it's got a uh, charge per, right now it's in float so it's at 54 volts at 12.7 amps which we equals 700 watts or Point, point 0.7, point 0.69 kilowatts. So that's all that that means. Anyway, that's the magic right there. Now let me show you the rest of the stuff. Put in a Nest camera, keep an eye on things. Here's my uh, propane Instafire gas hot water heater. I put this in and I splurged and put the clean out ports in there. So thinking that if we were going to, originally when I put this in, I wasn't thinking I was going to capture water, and the water here is really hard, so you have to run stuff through to clean out the elements when the heat heats heats up the water, kind of makes like, you know, at the bottom of your coffee or your uh, teapot, if you have it on a wood stove, it gets all that limestone in there, well, the water here is really hard, so I just have these ports right here so that I can clean them out really quick, but that was a quick thing to do, it turns out I don't need that anyway because I'm capturing water. Okay, so looking at the back of the house here, you can see where I brought, I can walk over here, but I tied in one side of the house. See that gutter up there? 
that gutter used to come down and go all the way over here and go down into the ground and who knows where it went from there. I tied in there and we came all the way across and down. I have to paint this obviously. I just put the brackets to hold it up in place. It comes in around here and over to this thing called a leaf catcher. And this leaf catcher has a mosquito screen in it. And basically any leaves or anything like that get caught and get kicked out right there. And it meets up with the other side. The other side comes in here, comes across here and goes, makes a transition from three inch to four inch. Four inch comes over here into what we call two first flush adapters. So we've already got the screen has got all the leaves out, but we haven't got stuff like bird poop or pollen or dirt or anything like, you know, dust, sand, anything like that that's on the roof. So the first 12 and a half gallons that come off the roof flows down here, comes down, fills this thing up, and there's a little ball in here. And uh, so what will happen is this ball will go and then the ball starts floating all the way up here and gets, you know, as the, the rain comes off the roof and it's washing all the stuff off, comes up and it hits an orifice right here and plugs that up. Then it, the water continues, it goes right by there, goes into the next one, the same cycle happens where it goes down, fills up the second one, ball rises up in the second one, hits that, and then once that's full, then it goes over to the other side. Let me bring you over there. So then it comes over and drops into this. This is a 200 gallon, what I call a settling tank. And you'll see, I've put it up off of the ground. So I made a little pedestal there, put it on there. And what happens is the water comes in and starts swirling around. And hopefully, if anything is in there, any solids or whatever, over time, they'll settle to the bottom. Now what happens from here, as you'll see, the water comes out of here, goes down, and it, it can be taken out of that one, but we don't, um, I have that sh set to off. So it'll come through here, come up th through here, when it hits here, it comes over and drops into my thousand gallon cistern. But this right here continues up and just goes to a screen so that it breaks a siphon and it won't siphon out. So basically the water's gonna be at this level all the time. If it rains a little bit more through gravity and pressure, it's gonna push its way out of there. If it, we get a whole bunch of rain all at one time, this will fill up and continue to push water out there. But if, it, if we have like, you know, a hurricane or monsoon rain or anything like that it goes too much. Then it will hit the three inch overflow and just go straight over. And by that time, there'll be so much water coming off the roof that I don't think that we're really worried about solids by that time. So that's what happens over there. So anyway, this is a big thousand gallon cistern. It's got a manhole in it. That wire right there is to a float switch so that if, uh, if we run out of water, the pump won't burn itself off, it shuts off. But then this is what we call a WOM, a water organization module. And yes, I know it's sitting there and it should be held up better and all that, but unfortunately it's just me working and uh, I've got a lot to put all this stuff together. So this is held up temporarily. I know that piece of wood's gonna rot out in the ground, but uh, the idea is when I come back in April, hopefully I'll be all set to build a more substantial box right around all this, keep the sun off it and all that sort of stuff. But the way this works, um, the water comes out of the big tank there and goes into, oops, sorry about that, goes into this line here. And this also has the ability, so if we run out of water in this tank, I can shut that valve off, come over and open this valve up and utilize all the water left over in my 200. So I kind of have a 200 gallon reserve, I guess is what you could say. But anyway, the water comes over here, comes up here, goes through a check valve. And the check valve, the re there's a reason why I put it there. I have, in Rhode Island, I haven't brought it back down here to Puerto Rico yet, a 36 inch UV 12 gallon per minute uh, sterilizing filter. And that's gonna fit right where that quick connect is. I put this piece of pipe in just temporarily so that I can use the system without it right now. But I'll disconnect that, put the thing on and put the UV sterilizer in there. And the reason why I have the check valve there is so that way any water that gets into the sterilizer, the bacteria, any viruses, any funguses, anything like that will be killed and just it will be suspended there. Then what happens is it comes through here, goes through a hundred mesh filter, and the way the hundred the way the mesh is designed, in one square inch there's a hundred holes. So obviously the more the number, the tighter the mesh is. So this comes through here like this, goes down and it comes over into our pressure pump. I just have a my my uh, grandmother's 
friend built this for him. So I just put the cover over the pump. But anyway, comes out of the pump and comes around and comes back up through here and then uh, over across and into a 500 mesh filter and into a 1000 mesh filter and then finally out and around and over to our house and a pressure tank. So uh, then, you know, I had to put some power and GFIs in, that sort of stuff. But anyway, this right here, people are saying, what is this for? This is just a future thing. I put a couple things for the future. If you can see over there, I also have another one over there that I can use as a system drain if I want. Or if you see right back there, I have room to put almost another 1,000-gallon cistern. Probably an 800 for sure, but maybe even a 1,000 if I had to in the future. So if it turns out this isn't enough water for what we want to do, we have the room to add to it, and I won't have to change the plumbing. I can just add right to there. And this right over here is just a safety backup where I want to put a inlet so that if we ever had a problem and we needed, we were out of our water and we wanted to borrow water from a neighbor, you could simply screw on a hose and it would still go through the filter and do all that. So that's it, guys. It's, uh, the numbers come in like this. It's a... Uh, 2.8 kilowatts on the roof of potential output, uh, a 10 kW battery bank of which only 5 kW is usable, so really about a 4 or 5 kW battery bank short term, and then a system that uh, has the ability to sell power back to the grid, it has the ability to change to any type of uh, even uh, battery system that hasn't even been developed yet meaning because you can go right in there and change all the charging parameters for everything that you need so if I want to go with sodium batteries or lithium-ion batteries or any of these things it should be all set to go so that's really kind of a real benefit for me um, it also has the ability to sell back to the grid does all kinds of good stuff and I can monitor everything from home all of which is really cool um, anyway hope you liked it I'll let you know how it works out